the markets almost tend to kind of squeeze those people. And it doesn't seem like MicroStrategy has been squeezed yet or some of these other players out as well. And I still think there's far too many cryptocurrencies for a healthy market. And trader or an investor can focus on where it doesn't sway you based on hype. And that's why that's why they tend to tell you the, the correct outcome of where things are going. Yeah, so so it, it for sure number one looking at the Bitcoin chart, to me this this is where a technical bounce should have occurred. Um, a lot of people were surprised when Bitcoin went below the 195 ish 2017 high. But if you, you understand how markets work, they tend to just go a little bit beyond key levels because there's a lot of stops put there. They need to run those stops. They have to get the maximum people bearish before the bounce can occur. So, so we saw, for instance, some bankruptcies, Celsius, Voyager, and some other situations as well that were really adding to that bearish sentiment. And that kind of led right into this bounce in the near term. And I still think the market has more upside in, in Bitcoin. So for me, the first target I have on the upside in the near term is that this pivot low, which was the Terra Luna low, that's probably a near term resistance level, right? We got close. We got within about you know, a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars away from that. But I still think that that will get hit after such a dramatic move up in Bitcoin, where you went almost straight from 19,000 to 24. It makes a lot of technical sense why price needs to pause, have a little bit of a pullback. We heard from Elon Musk yesterday with Tesla that that Tesla sold 75 percent of its Bitcoin. Uh, again, I don't think that was anything other than Elon Musk trying to just pare back some risk. But a lot of people that will be used as a reason to sell their Bitcoin as well, since he has so many followers. So again, very just normal kind of pullback here. I do think there's another move up. If we take out this 25 ish area, then I think your next stop is all the lows from this area. This is going to be an epically big resistance level, right? So I can put a trend line right through there. And what you can also see here is that one of the things in technical analysis, and I know you know this, Steve, is that when you have a confluence of, of trend lines kind of converging, that's going to be a bigger resistance level in this case than one tre trend line. And so what you can see here is if you connect the high from 2021, November, and the high here, that trend line is getting very close to this area here. So my thought process is that I'm pretty certain, I would say 78% sure that we'll see the 25.5. I think there's probably a 60 to 70% chance we'll get up to 28 and change here. But this is kind of my zone of where I think Bitcoin stalls out before the next leg lower. And again, I know people don't want to hear that. I, I don't blame them, but I do still think there is one more leg lower um, to flush out a lot of people that think the lows are in here. And again, the, the thinking isn't, isn't just pure, it, it's not just pure, you know, me guessing at it. The thought process here, for me at least, is that the measured move has not been completed, right? So if we take this high to this low, and then you, you see how the beautiful kind of channel we had this beautiful parallel channel created and then if you take so if you take that distance and you replicate it here from this high it actually takes us down to about 12 to 13,000 uh 12 to 13,000 also happens to be this pivot over here uh right in this zone as well as this area right down here as well so right kind of in this groove so that's kind of part of the reasoning i also think that i, I worry that we haven't seen enough hardship in the crypto sector. So one of the things that I pay attention to is, you know, seeing Voyager, seeing Celsius, I mean, those are things that naturally have to occur, but I still think that you haven't seen enough of it. It bothers me that Michael Saylor, there's no, there hasn't been, you know, we got down to 21,000, he, he then said, oh, my level's much, much lower. The markets almost tends to kind of squeeze those people. And it doesn't seem like MicroStrategy has been squeezed yet or some of these other players out as well. And I still think there's far too many cryptocurrencies for a healthy market. So I'm, I'm a huge long-term bull on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I think it's the, the wave of the future, just like the internet was. But we haven't fully seen the, the internet collapse that we saw on 2000 replicated in crypto just yet. Um, so again, those are some of the little key, key pivot points that I'm looking at. So for me, I'm looking at more of a 12, 13,000 ultimate bottom uh, on Bitcoin. I also think that if you compare Bitcoin and say, okay, 
Bitcoin is the Amazon.com of its era, right? So, you know, monster company now, but in, in 2000, it, it was a smallish company, you know, not, not the size of Bitcoin, obviously, but it was kind of that, that leader. And we saw Amazon collapse actually 95% from its highs in the dot-com collapse. And Bitcoin hasn't even done 80% uh, to 85, which is its normal cycle correction. So so for me, I look at that and then just to throw in one more thing and then I'll, 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 I'll throw the, the mic back to you is that we've seen, we've seen a lot of this kind of bloodletting going on, but I don't think we've seen all out panic. And again, if anything, this crypto correction should be more substantial than past ones because the Fed is not printing money anymore. And this is the first time in Bitcoin's lifespan where the Fed has not been printing a ton of money. So that would lead me to be more cautious thinking that we could see some further downside after a bounce here. Um, just the fact that the Fed is being more aggressive to fight inflation. So. Anyways, I love the fact that we have we have slightly different opinions. Um, I think that's very helpful to, to everyone, and I'll throw it back to you on that note. Yeah, and, and that's a great point, and, and, and I want to be clear on that. Is is like so for me when we got down. So so I've always said since we were at sixty nine, sixty eight thousand, is that there would be a time where I start accumulating a hot position, right? And so what I did was, and this goes to your point too, is like, I don't know where the low is gonna be. Maybe it is the low. It's very, very possible that the low is already in. And so what I did was when we got to 19,000, I started what I would be, what I would consider to be a one sixth position of what I want to accumulate of my HODL position. So again, you know, if you think about it, let's say $120,000 is what I want to HODL on Bitcoin. I put in 20,000 at 19,000 and I'm just going to leave that there because if this is the bottom and we go to 100 to 500, I do want to have exposure. And I think we're low enough when we got below 20 where it's smart to, I mean, even if it goes to 12, if you're in it like 19, 18, you know, 20, it's not that big of a deal versus if you're in at 65,000. I mean, then it's like major pain, especially if you're in that dollar cost averaging mode, like, like what I'm looking to do. So I think that's important. And, and I would say that that's kind of the, the attitude I would, I would tell people that are kind of mid to long term to have is that in the scheme of things, you're going to look back on this and say, oh, you know, what did it matter if I bought at 20 or 18 or 16 or even 12? At this stage, when it's 500,000, you're just like, this is awesome. So I think that's the important thing to kind of take away from it. And, I, and I'd also like to just point out is like, you know, if you go to this Amazon chart here, and let me get rid of some of these, uh, some of these short term lines, because I want to show you guys that longer term chart. But if we go to the, let's go to the monthly chart. So if we go to the monthly chart, and, and you just look at where Amazon was in the dot com era, right? So this is the, this is the M top that Bitcoin kind of has. So even if Bitcoin does correct down 85, 90%, look at where Amazon went afterwards, right? So here it is down here, dot coms, down at, you know, 13 cents. This is obviously post split. And then look at where it goes to. It goes to like $190. I mean, think about the X times of this. And then again, did it matter when when Amazon was at 13 cents? What if you bought it at 20 cents? You know, what if you bought it at 25 cents? It didn't, doesn't, at this stage, it doesn't matter. So I think that's, that's the mid to long term outlook is you have to say, listen, timing bottoms is unbelievably hard. I'm, I'm going to space my buys out and at least get some skin in the game. Good question. And, and again, the one six basically comes from 20 years of trading experience where in my first five years as, a, as attempting to become a profitable trader, I found that, you know, when I would go all in and say, oh, I'm going to be right on this level, the market always made me look the fool. And so I adjusted that. I, I kind of looked at my trading journal and my, my kind of thought process and how my results were coming out. And I saw that, wait a minute, when I would buy all in here at my full position, you know, 70 to 80% of the time it would go below that. And sometimes a lot below that where I would be in a lot of pain before it kind of played out, right? So, so the idea is that I learned from those and I, and I said to myself, listen, if I just buy a percentage of what I want to own and then I space out my buys methodically, I'll do much, much better. And I have my win rate has soared because of that, that kind of thought process. So what I'm doing with Bitcoin is at 19,016, basically between two and 3,000, every two to 3,000 down, I'll add another one sixth position that gave, gives me basically the ability to accumulate all the way down sub $10,000.
So again, that's kind of the thought process there. And, it, and again, it just helps me keep emotion at a minimum. And emotion is the worst thing is that a trader can have. You have to be robotic. You have to just say, okay, these are the facts. So when you tend to go in a full position, you're like on the edge of your seat right away versus when you're in a one six, it's like, okay, if it goes down 3000, no big deal. I almost want it to go down 3000 because I want to continue to accumulate. And if it go, does it and it goes to 100,000, I'm still making great money anyways. And it's that mentality of being defensive as a trader that I think made the big difference in my trading career versus being offensive. Offensive, you go in at a level, you're saying, oh, I'm going to be right all the time, and the market makes you pay, versus defensive, you're always kind of playing the safe game, which ends up making you so much more money over the longer term.